name is Hans George Campbell and tonight I'm out here in my shop um, working on this Commodore 64C case. Um, I uh, recently did a trade with my friend Sean up in Vancouver, Washington. He, uh, I traded him one of my Amstrad computers for one of his Commodore 64C computers in its original box and I'll be showing that in a future video, uh, Commodore pickup video. Uh, but when I told him that I was thinking about spray painting the case blue, he said, well don't do that, I'll, I'll just let you have another case, you know, if you want to spray paint a case. And so he let me have this case here um, with the keyboard and, and the keyboard mounts and the internal shield. So I thought that was that was nice of him. He just let me have it. Actually, I traded him like one of my old NEC monitors for it, uh, LCD monitors for it that he wanted. So I think he's happy with his trade. I'm happy with this case, and and yeah. Anyway, um, this is the color that I'm thinking about using. It's like a Krylon. Okay. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's like a, it's like, a, it's called periwinkle, satin periwinkle, and it's a beautiful color. Uh, let me see if I can pull the light closer over the, over the computer. I don't want to get the, yeah, the lip in there or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay. Okay, I've got these, like, uh, blue LEDs. They're, like, rectangular. And they'll fit perfectly. They'll pop in perfectly right here. And I think these... Oh, God. Okay, these blue LEDs... I think this blue LED will look really good with that periwinkle um, paint. And it's this, uh, this one right here. Okay, periwinkle. Yeah, I'll make sure you can see that the color. But yeah, it's called Satin Periwinkle. And the reason why I chose that paint is because that paint, it look, I mean, these beige keys, they look really good with that, with that particular color blue. And then there's a guy over in Europe. He sells custom-made badges on eBay, and now he has them in different colors and, and stuff, so I'm going to get one of those custom badges to put here. But when I spray paint this, well, before I spray paint it, I want to mask off this badge area with blue painter's tape, because you don't want to get any paint on that. I found out that the 3M double-sided sticky tape <clears throat> um, that's that the guy uses on the back of those badges, uh, that double-sided sticky tape sticks the best on bare plastic. So you don't want to get this painted. You want to keep that bare, just like that. Okay. So let me get a uh, get one of my screwdriver. And you want to use a small, um, a small number two Phillips because you're. You're going, uh, you, these are metal screws going in the plastic, so, yeah. Okay, actually, okay, let me get up. It's not going to be a Phillips. I think those are, I think they're T10s. That this is the proper screwdriver right here. It's a T10, Torque 10 uh, screwdriver. The same thing that's in the um, in the uh, Amiga 500 uh, computer. I'm just trying to get it where it's underneath the camera. Okay, so okay, yeah, you want to use something like this because this is low torque, and so there's less of a chance of you stripping the threads in these plastic cases. 
the rubber feet appear to be pretty good on this case. Yeah, but I'll wash this plastic tonight and rinse it and let it air dry overnight. And then tomorrow it'll be ready for spray painting. So, okay, so. Okay, so there's those screws. And uh, just like that, the keyboard. Well, Sean just let me have the keyboard, so I'm not worried about the keyboard that much. You got to be careful when you lift these cases up because they got clips on them and you can you can break those clips. In fact, one of the in fact two of these have already been broken. So, yeah. I'm not happy about that. Yeah, these are fine up here. Um yeah, but that's the uh that's the the inside of the case. I won't paint the inside. But um yeah. Yeah, I'll have to wash it and rinse this, let it air dry overnight. And then I'll um like I said, I'll mask this off of blue masking tape before painting it. Um get this out of the way. And uh because I wanna Okay, get these out of the way, get that out of the way. And, uh, okay, well, I'm going to try to get that out. Yeah, that just pops out. And as you can see, um, it's the, well, they're basically the same size, you know, size uh, comparison between the two. So the blue one should sort of look really nice in there. Um, I'm going to keep this original LED because these rectangular LEDs are now hard to come by. Uh, but yeah, I've got these in blues and amber, and I think I also have them in red, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, so that should fit pretty good. I usually wind up taking off these because they're not really needed. I mean, they just bang around inside the case, and it's it's like for RF shielding or some kind of crap. It's not needed anymore because I plan on using this computer with um, an LCD display. So yeah, and it gives you more wire too. See, so yeah, it gives you a whole lot more wire to work with. Okay, so this is the top part of the case. Um, I'll be washing and rinsing that and letting it, letting it air dry um, overnight. So, okay, and then this is the Okay, so this is the keyboard. I'm just going to keep this keyboard for parts. I don't like the keyboards when they're yellowed. Um, and I don't, I don't retro bright. So I'll just be looking for another keyboard in, in like mint condition. Unyellowed condition. Um, I think it'd be better just to flip this baby. Now these screws or bolts are Phillips. They're Phillips head. Yeah, they're Phillips. Yep, they're Phillips. So Oh, come on out of there. Alrighty then. And okay, so we have like that. And it just slides out from here. And there's the keyboard. Yeah, I'll keep this keyboard for parts. I'll take it apart. You know, and just keep this for parts. Yeah. But it's missing the plunger for the space bar. 
but I'd like to have all gray keys, but I don't know if any of the 64 C's came with um, all gray keys or not, because I think this one's from a C16 um, keyboard, and that's not going to work, because I think the the um, some of the graphics and text is different for the C16 than for the 64 C, so yeah. But uh, I wouldn't mind a keyboard like the keys are not yellow, they're in the nice beige color, right? And the darker beige or khaki color. And like I said, this will look really good. The beige keys look really good with that, peri that satin periwinkle uh, blue paint that I'm going to use to paint the, uh, the case. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, that keyboard I'll just use for parts. Now I'm glad. Now the shoe looks like it's in pretty nice shape. So I'll be keeping this shield. Um, I'll wash it, rinse it, let it air dry overnight, and then I'll prime it with Rust-Oleum primer, and then I'll paint it with Rust-Oleum paint to keep it from rusting or oxidizing. And I'll probably go back with, well, I don't have to use a silver paint. It could be like, I don't know, it could be like a satin black paint or, you know, any color I want, really. It's just, I just want to keep this from oxidizing or rusting, you know. I could wipe it down with WD-40 and be done with it. I could do that, too. Oh, okay, so there's a screw apparently in the uh, in the back of this case, like right here or something. Yeah, right here. Okay. Alrighty. So now what will it come out? Oh, it's got one other one there. Yeah, I'm not used to working underneath the camera because I built myself a new mount, a camera mount, so I can have the camera above my workbench so that, you know, I can do a lot of repair videos and recapping videos and things like that. So stay tuned for those kind of videos coming up. Okay, that should come up now. That yeah, should come up now. Okay. So, um, okay. okay I gotta keep these separate, the ones that go for the shield. Keep them separate from the ones that that go into the um, the plastic for the uh, the board circuit board. Okay. So. Okay. Anyway, there's the um, the top part of the. The shield, okay, top part of the shield, and I think Sean gave this to me mainly for these mounts because you need these to support the keyboard. But yeah, I want to because it's already starting to rust and oxidize, and I want to use this original shield because these tabs here. They touch the three chips that get hot in the 64C. Um, they don't get hot as the chips in, in the bread bin Commodore 64 because those use 12 volts as well as 5 volts. But on the 64C, uh, it's only 9 volts with the 5 volts. So the chips, they run a little bit cooler. They don't get as hot. But these three chips apparently still get you know, warm enough to warrant um, heat sinking 
you know, that heat away from the chips. So yeah, I want to try to reuse this this shield if I can for another Commodore 64C, you know, computer. So I'm gonna take it apart. I'm gonna wash it, rinse it, let it air dry overnight, and then I'll take Rust-Oleum primer. I'll prime it uh, the the top and the bottom. I'll, I'll I'll mask off here where these metal tabs touch the chip because that has to be bare metal. So I'll put blue masking tape on that. And also I'll take these off. They need to be taken off, I think. Will they come off? Oh, they're riveted as part of that. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll paint them too. No problem. I'll prime and paint those. No problem. And then I'll prime this with a good quality Rust-Oleum primer. And then I'll paint it with Rust-Oleum paint. Because Rust-Oleum paint works better on metal. Krylon paint, I found out, works better on plastic. So, yeah. And then, I haven't decided what color I want to paint this. I'm leaning toward either a satin black or a satin Commodore blue color. Or even like a khaki color, like satin khaki. You know? Or, or satin pebble. That would look pretty good too. I'm probably going, I'm going to go with um, the satin khaki. Yeah, just something to get this metal covered to keep it from rusting and oxidizing. You know, I don't want this rusting and oxidizing. Okay. Alright, so this is the bottom part um, of the shield, and it's got like miler in here, so I want to hang on to that, that miler piece. But yeah, I'll also wash, rinse, let this air dry overnight, although this bottom part is not bad. It just needs to be wiped down with WD-40, but now it's starting to rust in spots. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll prime and paint this too. And uh, keep it from rusting, oxidizing. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the bottom of the case, shall we? Here's the bottom of the case. Somebody, some stupid person, they put a um, a reset switch right there, which is stupid because a lot of your utility cartridges come with a reset switch and if you're going to add a reset switch to a Commodore 64 don't drill holes in the case like that even for your Jiffy DOS just don't do it you know uh, these cases are getting hard to find and just don't be drilling into the case it would be better just to you know put the reset switch in your cart one of your cartridges that plug into the computer you know just just don't drill into the cases I hate when people do that but this case I can't use the bottom part right there. I can't use it so I'll probably just wind up selling this case and the reason for that is, is like I said some some stupid person um, they drilled into the they drilled a hole in the case and put that reset switch and also somebody they got carried away that they forcefully, you know, they, they broke the uh, two of the um, these things here that the upper part of the case latches into. Okay, it's, they're supposed to look like like that one, and see they're they're um, they're broken. And yeah, because somebody they got carried away when they took this case apart, and they broke those latches. And I'm picky. I mean, yeah, I don't break the lashes. But when I take a case apart, those lashes would be perfect. They're not going to be broken. You know, so, yeah, I'll be looking for another bottom, bottom of a uh, 64C uh, case. But I can go ahead and wash the top, and I can go ahead and paint it and put, and put the new, uh, the, you know, the new logo and stuff on it, you know. Now, the nice thing about the 64C, the thing I really like about it over the bread bin model, is the 64C, I think the case is made better. Because uh, on the bread bin models, 
every last one of these, every every bread bin Commodore 64 that I've ever taken apart, um, these are always split. The keyboard and mouse, they're always split and broken on every damn one of them. And the same thing with these. They break real easy on the Commodore 64. And the same thing with the, the part that holds the keyboard. You know, the part that uh, that holds, you know, that the keyboard screws into. Those are usually split and broken, too. And the 64C, you don't have that problem. And also, the chips run, like I said, they run cooler on the 64C because their second supply of volts is 9 volts instead of 12 volts. So the chips tend to run cooler. And it's just, you know, I just prefer the 64C. Plus I think the 64C looks nicer. Um, I think Commodore should have changed the keyboard though. Instead of using um, the 64 keyboard why didn't they just also change the keyboard so it's more ergonomic? It, it looks more like the 500, you know, or the keyboard on the Commodore 128, you know. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I just want to show tonight me taking the 64C case apart uh, and, you know, prepping it for painting, that type of thing. See, somebody broke this off here. It's supposed to look like this. And somebody got carried away, and they, and they forcefully took the top off, and they broke this part, too. So the bottom part of the case is ruined. It's just ruined. I won't even be using this bottom part. The top part's fine. I, I can use that part, because there's nothing broken on it that I can tell. There's nothing broken on it. Um, yeah, I don't see anything uh, broken on this, on this top part. A lot. Of, another thing that happens is that if you put too much pressure in this metal part, uh, a lot of times it'll be broken right here. It'll, it'll be it'll be split right there. Yeah, and this one appears to be fine. So, yeah, it's not split or broken that I can see. Yeah. So yeah, and then these don't appear. Um, these don't appear to be split or broken. See, they're thicker. They're better made than on the bread bin model. I, I think it, I think it's just better made, you know. Um, and then this LED should pop in. Yeah, it'll pop in with no problem. That, LED, that blue LED. So, and I think it'll look really cool with the uh, the satin periwinkle um, paint. And I'll use this existing one. I'll just I'll just um, cut it like right about here because I want to save this LED. So I'll probably cut it right. I don't know. Probably right there where the heat shrink is. And, uh, and then I'll I'll solder on the blue LED onto here, and I'll heat shrink it. So it's nice, and then I can just pop it into the case. You know, I think it'll, it'll look good. Anyway, that's it for for this video. I just wanted to come out of here to the shop. I felt like starting to work on this this case, um, and I also wanted to test out the new camera mount and and see how it works and and you know how it all looks. So yeah. Anyway, my name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time.